In most parts of the world, Santa drives in a bright red sleigh. But here in Memphis, he takes a red Cadillac convertible. Hey everybody, welcome back to Auto Anatomy. My name is Sean, thank you so much for joining us. Now, today we're gonna to show you a project car that we've had for about a year now, um, and I've hinted at it on some of our social media, but I haven't really shown you this. Dad picked up this 1973 Cadillac Eldorado convertible about a year ago, and he, he purchased it from an elderly gentleman that um, had done a lot of work on it. He got it painted, um, had a brand new top installed, and cosmetically it's beautiful, but it does need a little bit of mechanical work. He had the carburetor replaced on this thing, and unfortunately it's just too small of a carburetor. Um, when you, you try and drive it and just off idle, it, it goes dead lean, has a stumble, then picks up, and anyway, it's just too small a car. They had taken off the original Quadrajet and put a uh, like a 600 CFM Edelbrock on there, and I think it's jetted for like a small block Chevy rather than the 500 cubic inch um, engine that this thing has. And we thought about just swapping out and putting in, you know, different metering rods and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's still too small of a carburetor. So we need to do some mechanical work on this thing. The other problem with it is the power steering pump leaks terribly. So we're going to rebuild the power steering pump, get it on, and then look at swapping out the appropriate sized Rochester Quadrajet for this car. If you like seeing classic cars get brought back to life, take just a moment, hit that subscribe button, click the like button, and ring the bell to be notified when new videos come out. It's an absolutely free way to help support our channel. All right, let's dive into getting this classic back on the road. So Dad had purchased a new power steering pump for the car from one of the uh, big box auto parts stores, and it did leak straight out of the out of the package. So we're going to take it apart again here and see if we can figure out what's leaking. Probably just a pinch seal or something like that. But we're going to get it apart, get it all clean, get it put back together, and hopefully this time it doesn't leak. So spring plunger and that. That's yeah. all that should come out That's of it, right? It. That's okay. It. And then this just, well, what, I, what you can do, it's like put a bolt in it and push. I usually tap it with a dead blow. But okay, great. Let's do that. So let's take the back cover off because this thing's just not sitting flush right now. So I don't know if it seals just not sitting down right or, or what, but... You, you have experience with this thing, so you uh, more than I would like. You show us how it's done. Well, apparently, it's it's coming. Okay. There you go. There you have a pump. Okay, so this is just an O-ring, right? Yeah. It's not like a, a lip seal where it has no. to, to go one way or anything. It's just a big old <clears throat> ring. Okay. Um, do you have any like Vaseline or? Uh, yeah. Uh, I just want to measure the depth on here and make sure that this thing is going to sit flush. It has to be. How deep? So that looks like where it should be flush, and that is right at 60 millimeters. I've got some red grease. I don't know. Uh, red grease would work. Yeah. Okay. What's my red grease? So measure the depth on it, and it looks okay. So okay. it's not like we've got a bent something. Ooh, that all right, got the sucker all lubed up, and all of our seals are on, and it goes pretty much just like that, right? It, it lines awesome. up with well, those. Yes. And it, um, where are these? Are these the bolts that just kind of line it up? Yeah, I usually put them in there. Now, if you want to set it on something and tap it in. Yeah, I think I've so. Couple, I'll give it yeah, up. that'll be perfect. Off the, yeah. Deal. I think 
we are on the right track here. Fits a lot of different GM applications. Okay. So these are the ones that fit this one. So we'll make sure we're not missing something. Like, you know, we put the pulley on and then have to take it right back off. Yeah. Okay, so it just drops right on. and Drops then... right on. It's held in place by a, by a bolt. Okay. Okay, pumps on bracket, pulleys on pump. I think we're ready to put it in. I think we are. <laughs> I mean, it looks like this thing drops over this stud and then there's a bolt down there and there is a uh, okay. that's the nut that holds it on right there okay should we put the um we should put the hose on first the back hose on here or um, actually you can get to it pretty easily yeah, you get to it okay you I mean, go ahead and get that nut on if you can i'll hold this in place Ooh. Gold plated. Yes, king of the world soft uh, racket. <laughs> just tighten this up a little bit by hand. First, you know, here on the Cadillac, we only use gold plated ratchets. Cadillac, I need you to do better. This thing is impossible to get to. Okay, let's try this thing again here. Longer ratchet through the belt. Nothing but net. Okay, pump is mounted, belts are tight. Let's get some hoses on this thing, get some fluid in it and fire it up. I think the best clamp is the one that holds. Yeah. Good theory. It's like we talk about in the hospital all the time, sometimes the best medicine is the one that the patient will take. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes the best clamp is the one that works, the one that will hold. All right, got the power steering pump all put back in place. All the bolts are tight, belts are tight. Let's put some fluid in this thing and fire it up. All right, fluid coming up. Oh, I need, let me get up. Oh. You may need a funnel for this one. <laughs> I've got to imagine this thing holds a ton of power steering fluid. I think it does. Oh uh, yeah, we've got some. I think we can probably put just a wee bit more in it, then fire it up and circulate. Okay, let's see how that goes. Oh, right there. Oh, yep, that was plenty. That was <laughs> enough. All right, that was a perfect amount. Yep. All right, let's fire this beast up and see what she do. All right, let's fire up this old girl. And the battery's dead. Over there by you? Uh, it is over here by me. Okay, battery charger. Okay, let's try this again. And it has sucked all that fluid down already. Yeah, it's frothy a little bit, but I think it needs a little bit of time and maybe a little bit more fluid. So I messed up on the bleed procedure. Apparently you're not supposed to start these things until they are fully bled because they'll start foaming and that's exactly what ours did. Um, I did a little looking and apparently you're supposed to lift the car, you know, the front end up in the air, fill it full of fluid, spin the wheels back and forth, lock to lock, you know, with the engine off, and then fill it full of fluid again, 
and then start the engine up. So now we've got to wait for all of this foamy fluid to come out and then do it all over again. What is it? Do you find anything about bleed procedure? Yeah, I did. And I've never seen this before. All right, while the uh, power steering pump is cooling down, we're getting a bunch of air out of it, just turning it side to side. We've got a new quadrajet here for it to replace the Edelbrock and just trying to match up all of the vacuum ports and things like that on it. So I think we've got it figured out. Um, and interesting. So it looks like on the uh, throttle linkage, they just shoved a bolt in it and then slid this, the throttle cable over that and then just put a cotter pin in it. And on here, it, it goes over that. You know, do you have like a C-clip or something? Oh yeah. Okay, so that will be okay. Fuel hoses, um, we just need to make sure we've got the right inlet here for it. And I wonder if that one will screw in. That would be the only concern that I have with switching carburetors around, but I think we take it off and at least try it and see what we can make work. Works for me. All right, so we've got the new carburetor on. Um, I think we've got all of the, uh, the air bled out of the, the power steering system now. Um, I have to say that was a weird um, learning opportunity for both dad and I, because we've never seen a power steering system that you have to basically lift the front end off the car uh, or off the ground, turn it side to side until it quits burping before starting the engine and then start the engine. Um, every other power steering system we've ever done, you just basically fill it up with fluid, crank it up, turn it lock to lock, and it bleeds. But I guess this one wants to foam. So learn something new every day. New carburetor is on. Um, I think we're pretty much ready to fire it up. Let's see what it does. <laughs> Well, she fired right up. Seems like tire steering's quiet. I think that's a victory. The carb. Sounds like we may have a timing issue still. <laughs> but it's running. You know, I think it's running so well. Why don't we just go take this thing for a drive? But, you know, what good is a convertible if you don't put the top down? Convertible top, down. We got it all up and running again. Let's go take it for a test drive. Well, 
secondaries kicked in. Yes, they did. Gross. The question about that was Mark. <laughs> I can't tell if it's missing or. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's got no power. It's got no power? It's coming up that hill out way down on it. It's kind of what I thought. I was wondering if you were pushing on it hard. Yeah. Okay. So we've got some work to do. Well, this does have smaller primaries than the uh, yeah. Edelbrock with big secondaries, but still, I would think that it would be... Uh, yeah, it's beyond that. Though. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let's go and pull over and switch the, um, um, the distributor vacuum. So I wonder if it's not getting any advance now. Huh, that's a thought. So let's just pull over up here, like I'll, at our I'll next. Pull over in the park, up there. Yeah, and then switch the uh, uh, the advance around. It's because yeah, it, it feels sluggish. Point. It feels like it's not getting any ignition advance. Yeah, I bet you that's it. Okay, let's do that. All right, did a little switching around of some. Uh, some vacuum hoses for the distributor advance. Let's see what it does. So now it's way down on power. What is going on? I don't understand. Okay, we have done a whole bunch of things. Um, Turns out the uh, the choke was sticking open, so that was part of the problem, but let's go drive it again. Definitely has more power right now. Definitely got more power. And makes good noises when you stand on it. It does. Makes an outstanding uh, look at the noises. All right, the car's running a whole lot better, but we've got toys to deliver, so hit it, Santa. <laughs> so there's still a whole lot more work that needs to be done on the Cadillac. Um, it's running better than it was when uh, we started with the Edelbrock carburetor, but it's still not quite right. A um, couple of things that we've noticed that are wrong. Um, on the Edelbrock carburetor, it had a, uh, an electric choke, and on the original Quadrajet, it had a heat air like divorced choke where it had a little rod that stuck down into the uh, the intake manifold or into a little well in the intake manifold and all of that was missing so when we were driving around earlier and the car was running poorly what was happening is the uh, you'd hit the throttle and it would suck the, the the choke closed and just basically gag the engine um, so it wasn't making any power we zip tied the uh, the choke open and it definitely runs better now, second problem we've got is that there is almost no ignition advance um, on the distributor. It's got a Caddy Daddy aftermarket, uh, kind of like a Pertronics unit on it. Um, so I know that's working right, and the base timing is set to eight degrees, but when you rev it up, it's getting maybe like two additional degrees of mechanical advance. So I looked at all of the, the weights and the, the arms and everything is moving fine, I'm just not getting any mechanical advance. So I think that's the second problem that we've got um, with tuning. But you are definitely gonna see more of this car on the future. It's got an exhaust leak. It's got, uh, the exhaust is hanging down in the middle. Um, it looks like somebody's just kind of cobbed up a, an exhaust system on it. So we definitely need to do something different with the exhaust moving forward in the future. But that's gonna wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. God bless you. Merry Christmas, and we will see you in the new year.